After studying this module, we shall be able to know about different forms of everyday memories and describe the impact of autobiographical memories in our life. We shall be able to understand the importance of flashbulb memories and explain about the reliability issues related to eyewitness testimony. We shall also learn the ways by which our memory can be improved. After studying this module, you should be able to first describe about the different everyday memories. Second, explain the impact of autobiographical memories in our life with its structures. Third, discuss the importance of flash bulb memories. Fourth, learn about the eyewitness testimony in light of its reliability issues. And lastly, discuss the ways in which memory can be improved. Memory is the most interesting topic of research for so many years and still remains to be the same till date. It covers various fascinating topics that give hope for more research work in this field. If you have to understand about memory, it becomes important for us to know that our very survival depends on our ability to remember who we are, who others are, what all past experiences we had, what is dangerous and what is safe for us. Its importance can't be ignored if we don't focus on these aspects of our life. In addition, people often believe their memories to be absolute and true. After all, it would be very disconcerting to think that the things that we remember to be true are in fact wrong. The reality is memory is not complete or absolute. In fact, many of our memories are completely wrong and yet we hold on to them dearly. Just to understand these aspects only further, this module shall focus on the role of our everyday memories in our life, which includes our autobiographical memories and the eyewitness testimony. You shall also understand how we can improve our memory for better recall. This has led for many uh, researchers to study everyday memory. This was the reason why so many researchers are working on this area to understand the difference between two individuals to remember their everyday experiences. One of the researchers who studied everyday memory was Coriat and Goldsmith in 1996, who pointed out that everyday memory tended to differ from other memory researchers in three dimensions. So there would be three reasons why these memories would be different from one, one another. Uh, first, what memory phenomenon should focus on? According to everyday memory, the phenomenon is uh, to focus on everyday experiences of people. Second, how, memory, how should memory be studied? Everyday memory should focus on the applicability of findings and real life situations which can further help them rather than just the text knowledge. Which memory phenomenon should be st uh, studied? Some of the researchers who all uh, are working in this area of everyday memory are in favor of naturalistic settings that if you remember certain events, it would be better that if they are remembered in national uh, surroundings rather than experimental or laboratory based settings. So far, these three questions, what, how and where are the main focus of all the everyday memories. Thus, can further explain the difference between memory as it was tr uh, studied traditionally and memory that is studied uh, every day in everyday life. Uh, Nicer in 1996 uh, claimed to identify the crucial differences between memory, focus through experimentation and laboratory research and the everyday experience in natural settings. Phenomena. The participants in traditional memory studies are generally motivated to be accurate as possible as the memory phenomena performance. In contrast, everyday memory um, the research is based on the notion that relationship, uh, remembering 
is a form purposeful uh, purposeful action that means if you purposely take an action to remember certain things that would be remembered in a much better manner uh, the other uh, context which we would be referring out here is autobiographical memory autobiographical memories are memories of an individual's past history uh, according to Convoy and Rubin in 1993, autobiographical memory is memory for the events of one's life, what they have gone through. Recently, it has become the focus of many researchers that we have said that these are the most important uh, forms of memory which are taking a lot of interest and these are the interesting topics which have been taken by many researchers out here and it involves uh, many psychological studies are being done in these areas. One of the reasons that these types of memories are interesting is that they are related to individuals where the focus is on the unique history of events, something which uh, is very different, something which uh, holds on importance for people. Uh, this uh, autobiographical concept is also being taken by many RJs and radios. They, are, they always ask you, can you share the first uh, birthday which you had gone through or the first date which you had. So these are basically, they are trying to uh, take those uh, memories of yours and reliving, letting you relive those moments. So even those, uh, uh, these concepts are also famous in the media centers also. So you can understand very well how important, how, how interesting it is for them to know about your past experiences and histories. And it is also important for you also to go back into the flash, uh, uh, flashback of your own uh, life. Uh, for, for that reason, autobiographical memory, sometimes termed personal memory, is a combination of both episodes, episodes recollected from an individual's life. When considered collectively, autobiographical memories uh, serve as a basis for a person's life story. These memories help a person's sense of identity and self-image. Let's understand through an example that, uh, about these autobiographical memories. The terrorist attack on the World Trade Center was a public event, but events of, uh, of your 13th birthday are known only by you, your parents and perhaps a very few people who were there. So autobiographical memories would be your personal, own personal experiences which you had, which you shared, rather than the experiences of the world. Uh, because certain things as your first date would be experienced by you, you would be knowing or your girlfriend would be knowing or the events which you have family functions would be known by your very close people. But publicly, obviously, it would not be other people would not know about those events. So those are termed as your autobiographical uh, memories which as when we take an example of uh, World Trade Center, uh, everybody knows about it, what had happened, how these planes had attacked the building. And uh, it is publicly aware, people are aware of it, it's a public event. But uh, things which are personally birthdays, anniversaries, any other event which you personally have experienced, you and your close people will know it. Autobiographical, me me autobiographical memories are related to individuals' personal goals, most powerful emotions and their personal meanings. They will hold powerful meanings, powerful emotions attached to it. Maybe you must have cried a lot uh, after seeing uh, your first child or after experiencing uh, the marriage. It would be your own personal emotions which are attached to those events or those experiences in your life. If an individual is not able to recall these events from their lives, it might affect their identity as such. If supposedly everybody in a group are sharing what they had done in, on their teen birthday and you're the only one who's left out who doesn't remember what you had done. So obviously you would be left out from that birthday, uh, from that group and you will feel as isolated. Your emotional reactions would be very different. So this will hold uh, your, you would be questioning yourself, your self-image, your identity. You will having a, a doubt on yourself that why I'm not able to remember those events. So in some way or the other, it will affect your identity. It will affect your self-image in that aspect. Then uh, let's uh, go through what are the structures which are involved in the organization of autobiographical memories. There is always an enormous amount of information is being stored away in autobiographical memory, which might, might, might be too general, not important for you, or fairly important events, which might be, so it could be a combination of both the things, either it would be too important or it would be too less for you, or not important for you. To understand this structure, it also becomes important for us to understand the patterns that are involved in retrieval of uh, personal informations. 
Convoy in 1996 found that people remembered autobiographical events in terms of their lifetime periods as they may be, as can be applied over years or even decades. These periods are the first level retrieval cues that serve to familiarize us to autobiographical time and trigger more specific recollections of those events. Therefore, he applied these informations and identified three levels of autobiographical memory. Lifetime periods, uh, it might evoke mood, significant goals or general themes of period about but not concentrates on events. They are defined as ongoing situations which are substantial for a period of time. That means an event which has gone through, which you are going through, it's a lifetime. Uh, it will evoke some kind of a mood, some kind of a goal which you have, which you generally wanted to meet in life. General events, these are uh, chronologically organized personal experiences that cluster about thematically important landmarks in time. For example, first time experience as falling in love, uh, graduating from high school would be all the general events which you have gone through and which hold some personal kinds, personal touch within it. Uh, last would be uh, event specific knowledge. These event specific would be in terms of concrete images or sensory replays of a specific uh, event. These detailed recollections are always integrated with some kind of a schema based representation or general events. So um, level one would be lifetime periods, long segments of time measured in years and even decades. Second level would be your general events that extended components of uh, compos uh, the, which would co uh, comprise of episodes measured in days, weeks or months. An event uh, would be uh, individual episodes measured in terms of seconds, minutes or hours. Each level has its own special uh, value. Lifetime periods are considered to be more effective cues to many kinds of memory retrieval than any other cues. Uh, Convoy, Convoy in 1996 did a study on this where he told his participants to retrieve specific events in response to cue word restaurant. The participants reported that they often worked through lifetime periods and general events before reporting the details of specific events. So basically, they experience the general events in their life, they, they experience the lifetime periods uh, in their life and then they uh, narrated about the word restaurant. Uh, Con uh, Conway in 1996 also suggested that autobiographical memories processes a hierarchical structure. That means there is a hierarchy, there is a step by step through which we follow it would be event specific knowledge forming a part of general event each general event forming a part of lifetime period information at the top of the uh, is the least vulnerable to loss and at the bottom we can see that the episodic specific knowledge are most vulnerable a study uh, done on brain damaged patients supported this view also uh, now let's try and understand flash bulb uh, flash bulb memories the, fla the term flash bulb was coined by Brown and Kulik in 1977. Flashbulb memories are distinctively vivid, precise, concrete, long-lasting memories of a person's circumstance surrounding of certain traumatic events. Hearing the news that World Trade Center had been attacked by a terrorist is the uh, mortify uh, is uh, is the prototype case. You can also remember with an uh, almost per perceptual clarity where you were when you heard the news, what you were doing at that time, who all were there with you when you heard about this incident, when you were informed about this incident, what was the immediate aftermath you had, you said about, you heard about it, how you felt about it. So all these things were related to flashbulb memories where you describe about where, how, when, whom you were. So all these questions are addressed in flashbulb memories. According to Brown and Kulik, flashbulb memories are not only accurate and very long lasting, but also often include the following categories of information. Informant, person who actually told you about the information, place where the news uh, was first heard, where you were, were you sitting with your friends, you were alone sitting in your room, you were with your family, you were attending a family function. Uh, Ongoing event, what all you were doing, uh, individuals or uh, own emotional state, were you in a happy mood, happy state, uh, you were uh, feeling uh, very sad when you heard about that or you had your own, uh, uh, some kind of event which happened in your life at that time when you heard this news. 
emotional state of others, reactions of others. Oh, they started crying, they started howling when they heard this news. Uh, consequences of the event for the individual. What consequences were there um, of the event for the in, as an as a person for you for the other people who were around you? Flashful memories. If you just uh, imagine, uh, if you just go back to your memory system. Uh, when Indira Gandhi was assassinated. What kind of a feelings, if you answer all these questions to yourself, what, where were you when you heard this news? What were you doing? Who all were there? So all these would be com comprising of flashable memories. Even if you think about John F. Kennedy, uh, again, when you heard this news or uh, when people had shared these things, how you were feeling when this information was shared, when you heard about these things. So what was their reactions? Even with Rajiv Gandhi, when he was assassinated, uh, attack on parliament was there. So all, all these are the current issues, current uh, events which had taken place, even uh, the floods in Kashmir. So when you hear about these things, what kind of a, uh, emotional state you go through? And if you answer all those questions, the individuals, the persons, the events which I have experienced, so this will help you in understanding more about, uh, more about flashbulb memories. The term flashable memory also refers to photograph metaphor for which the details of extra extremely surprising or shocking events are printed accurately in your memory. It is also a photograph uh, kind of a memory which you can say that okay when uh, Kashmir, floods in Kashmir were happening you were there, you were present, you had gone for a to visit out there. So when you have to store that information, that information would be uh, it, it's, uh, in, it's in a manner of clicking a photograph and storing it in your memory where each and every incident, each and every aspect is remembered. You were with your friends. You uh, were stuck somewhere on how you were able to come out of it. Each and every uh, image would be very clear in front of you, which will help you in remembering those images very well. Uh, what makes a flashbulb memory so special? The answer to this is the emotional arousal at the moment and the event was registered to the memory. What kind of emotional state you elicited when you heard uh, when you were experiencing these memories is a very, uh, it, it makes the flashable memories, this is the reason why flashable memories are so special because it is related to your emotional state, the emotional experience which you go through. And this experience, these memories are shared with each other that they tend to be repeated again and again because whenever you sit with your group of friends, you always tend to share, oh, I was there, I had seen it, I had experienced it, you can't even understand, I had gone through these things. So it helps to connect with people and you tend to repeat those informations again and again when you, uh, every time you go through these events. You can also take an example of an uh, army, uh, ex-army official. He will always re uh, narrate his stories, what he had gone through when Kargil was there, what experiences he had, what his uh, team members were going through, uh, all the Jawans were saying. So they will, uh, they will narrate these stories and connect to people uh, every time when they uh, hear a certain cue for those uh, memories. Uh, next is the eyewitness testimony. Eyewitness testimony is the application which is being used uh, in law also where you try and report about the individuals which is uh, an incident which you have seen and you narrate that incident. If you have seen an accident, you try and narrate that accident to the police officials or the law officials. They will try and question, reaffirm uh, whether you have uh, whatever you are saying is the correct information um, as seen by you or not or reconfirm with the other individuals also. It is well uh, studied aspect of episodic memory and it is fact that many innocent individuals have put, been put in prison on the basis of eyewitness testimony also. Maybe your information, what you are uh, perceiving, maybe that inf uh, is not the way it is being perceived by you. It could be something else also but still people are being judged on the eyewitness testimony. For example, a person can be convicted on the basis of the testimony of a single eyewitness who might have been present at that situation. Therefore, the re uh, reliability of this kind of memory can have major implications. Let us consider, for example, a girl who identify a man who had uh, raped her at knife point. The man who convicted and gave, given a life sentence. Some years later on, DNA evidence had revealed that it could have been him and identified another man as the rapist. Her testimony has, has been convincing enough for a jury, but her memory was erroneous. Uh, 
Now let's uh, understand the role of emotional arousal in eyewitness testimony. Uh, emotional arousal can lead to poor recall for details. What kind of a uh, uh, whether you were highly aroused at that moment or you were uh, there was a low arousal level. This will help you in understanding about the flashable memories. This will have an impact on the memory of a person. Therefore, a single eyewitness for an incident is not to be believed for the emotions might overpower them. Uh, Post-event information is also important. Uh, Loftus in 1979 shows that wording of a question can influence the recall of a memory. Supposingly, if you need to answer a question and if you just give a hint before how it has been worded will definitely affect the uh, uh, mentioning of that information or showing an object mentioned after an event can often missing, miss uh, takenly recalled as having been there. Uh, pa uh, participants basically, uh, uh, let's take, uh, it could be explained with an example where they had seen an accident and jury members get impressed by the confidence of an eyewitness. But participant watched a traffic incident and were then asked one of the following. How fast were the cars going on when they had contacted each other? How fast were the cars going on when they hit each other? And how fast were the cars going on when they smashed each other? Eyewitness responses were influenced by the verb used in the question, which were asked in three different manners. The first sentence, which used the word smashed, produced the highest estimates of speed, comparison to the participants who had heard the words smashed later. This will give you an idea of how different uh, different if you uh, give a signal or a cue out there it will definitely help you it, it will definitely uh, give an impact on recalling the information which was there another uh, aspect which can be related to this is confirmation bias this occurs when uh, what is remembered of an event is influenced by observers expectations for example students from two universities in delhi maybe delhi and punjab was shown a film for a cricket game involving both university, universities. The students showed strong tendency to report that their opponents had been used, uh, used more abusive language than their own team. Thus, they will show favorable remarks for the group which they belong to rather than which they differed from. If we apply this to crime situation, it will really have an impact on the eyewitness person. In a study, they had shown a filmed version of crime to the participants. It was observed that memory of real life crime uh, because the presence of violent criminals might endanger the life of an eyewitness. The uh, next uh, topic which we would be addressing out here would be improving memory which interests all of us and how we can improve our memory in a longer period of time or for a lifespan. The researchers have done an imparting uh, amount of work is being done in these areas. Everyday memory is being done. We are focusing on limitation and distortions of how memories can be focused on and why we are having poor memory in these areas and where these are uh, tablets are playing a role and other uh, things are coming and picking up uh, their uh, area, picking up their roles out here. The best way is to improve your memory. There would be certain techniques in psychology which we term as would be helping you to improve your memory. First technique is the mnemonic system. Men uh, mnemonic is a technique or advice such as rhyme or an image that uses familiar associations to enhance the storage and the recall of information in memory. Three important parts are incorporated into the definition. First is the use of familiar information association, information or association. Second, the storage recording of information. And third, the remembering of information that is stored. Therefore, mnemonics are memory devices that help uh, learners recall larger pieces of information, especially in the form of lists like characteristics, steps, stages, parts, phases. Uh, first technique in mnemonic would be method of loci. Method of, uh, method, uh, one of the oldest and the and and best documented of the early mnemonic device is the method of loci. Method of loci uses locations of familiar place. It could be imagined, you can imagine a room and then uh, try and remember what the information which you would like to. When you use this method, we tend to make association of items as we wish to remember them with some location or an image of a familiar room or a building. Supposingly, for you are studying for your exam. And you have remembered one, you have studied that uh, specific chapter in one room. 
when you have to recall that information in your exam you would imagine your room you would be imagine yourself sitting in that area and the information will automatically start coming start filtering within your system so that you are able to write that information in your exam this will this is the method of loci now peg word system the peg word system or a peg list system has several forms but the basic idea is that one learns a set of words that serve as pegs on which items to be memorized are hung much as hat rack has pegs on which hats scarves and coats may be hung let's consider an example to further answer, understand it it could be rhyming number rhyme list one would be rhymed as bun two would be rhymed as shoe and even if uh, we uh, take an example of a rhyme that uh, uh, it could be rhymed as uh, one bun two shoe three 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 would be rhymed as tree four would be rhymed as door so this is how you try and remember 10 uh, with the uh, you remember those words bun shoe tree door hive with those 10 uh, numbers which you have associated to it towards it so uh, the visual and the auditory both works in the peg word system next is the keyword method it is uh, to some extent different from the peg words uh, technique it has been used by Atkinson and in second language uh, instructions also it's a key uh, when you're learning a foreign language you try and pick up those words from the English words which associate with the English ones is supposedly you're learning a language uh, it's basically uh, you try and see English associations because the language which you know you try and associate it with that language to learn the foreign language currently uh, maybe thus a chain is formed between the foreign word and the English translation consider pato this spa the Spanish word for duck pato is similar in sound to pot o using the word pot as a keyword we would imagine a duck with a pot over his head. Second last is the organizational schemas. It is commonly known as knowledge is structured in a systematic way. You try and put up, uh, it's a technique to organize information into semantic categories which are then used as cues for recall. As already uh, seen that organized material is very well remembered. So information which is organized in a uh, much better manner will be recalled faster. Story method is another way by which you can recall the information in which you remember a list of unrelated words by narrating a story or forming a story out of those unrelated words which will help you in remembering those words in uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, last is the face name system. Face name system another mnemonic technique is uh, the face name system which helps you remember names. You can uh, have to you if you have to think of a uh, name of an individual you will try and uh, form a link or a uh, image of that person and you try uh, with that prominent features of the uh, persons uh, on the face of a person then you are able to remember the name of that person you have to think of an image linked to the name of the person and then link this image to the prominent features on the person's face for example if someone was called uh, uh, egg, Eggington, you would imagine her with an egg on her head. This will help you in remembering the uh, name of a person. So till now what we have learned, let's summarize that, let's try and uh, refresh ourselves what, what we have done, what we have studied in, the, in this module. Everyday memories focus on the context of everyday experiences which people might have gone through. Autobiographical memories is termed as personal memories that are the combination of episodes recollected from an individual's life. They are identified in three levels, lifetime periods, general uh, events and knowledge based events. Flashbulb memories are distinctively vivid, precise, concrete and long lasting memories of personal circumstances surrounding by certain dramatic events. An important and well studied aspect of episodic memory is the memory of the eyewitness. It is the fact that many innocent individuals have been put in prison purely on the basis of eyewitness testimony. The role of emotional experiences, response, confirmations and uh, have been ignored. Mnemonic is a technique, for, um, technique or device such as rhyme or an image that uses familiar associations to enhance the storage, uh, uh, storage 
and the recall of the information in memory. Different ways to improve memory are PEG system, keyword system, story system and face name. Let us understand the concept of everyday memories so that we can understand how they differ from traditional memory. The focus of everyday memories are the everyday experiences which individuals might have gone through. Everyday memory also focuses on the applicability of findings to real life solutions which can further help. Some of the researchers who are working in the area of everyday memory are in favor of naturalistic settings. Biographical memories are memories of an individual's past history. According to Conway and Rubin, 1993, autobiographical memory is memory for the events of one's life. Autobiographical memories are related to individual's major goals, most powerful emotions, and their personal meanings. Let's understand this through an example. Events of your 13th birthday are known only by you, your parents, and perhaps a few other people. Therefore, an autobiographical event is one that you personally experienced. In this slide, you shall be able to understand different levels or structures of autobiographical memory. Conway, 1996, identified three levels of autobiographical memory, which are 1. Lifetime periods. It might evoke moods, significant goals, or general themes of the period but not concrete events. 2. General events. These are chronologically organized personal experiences that cluster about thematically important landmarks in time. For example, first time experience of falling in love, graduating from high school, etc. 3. Event specific knowledge. Event specific knowledge would be in terms of concrete images or sensory replays of a specific event. The term flashbulb memory was coined by Brown and Kulik in 1977. Flashbulb memories are distinctly vivid, precise, concrete, long-lasting memories of a personal circumstance surrounding certain dramatic events. According to Brown and Kulik, flashbulb memories are not only accurate, but also very long-lasting. For example, the assassination of Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi, 2611 attack, or attack on our parliament. An important and well-studied aspect of episodic memory is the memory of the eyewitness. It is a fact that many innocent individuals have been put in prison purely on the basis of eyewitness testimony. It is prone to error and can be very misleading. The reliability of it is also a major concern and its implications are a focus of interest. In the next slide, these concerns are further discussed. A lot of research is being done in this area where reliability of eyewitness testimony is questioned. The following are some of its concerns. 1. Role of emotional arousal. Loftus, 1978, in his experiment showed that emotional arousal can lead to poor recall for details. Memory can be intensified by emotionally charged events or emotions can overpower an individual. Therefore, a single eyewitness for an incident is not to be believed as his emotions might overpower him. 2. Post-event information. Memory for an event is not necessarily a true record of an event and that different methods of questioning can yield different responses for the same memory. 3. Confirmation bias. This occurs when what is remembered of an event is influenced by the observer's expectations. Thus, they will show favorable remarks for the group which they belong to rather than the group which is different from them in any way. Let us now understand how we can improve our memory. Mnemonic is a technique or device used for this purpose. It is a rhyme or an image that uses familiar associations to enhance the storage and the recall of information in memory. One of the oldest and best documented of the early mnemonic devices is the method of loci. In the method of loci, sequential pieces of information are encoded by using locations of a familiar place, imagined in memory, as a framework for memory retrieval. The peg word system or a peg list system is another technique in which the items in the list to be remembered are associated with the sequential items in the memorized jingle. It has several forms, but the basic idea is that one learns a set of words that serve as pegs on which items are to be memorized. The keyword method, in which a keyword is an English word that sounds or is partly similar to the foreign word which is to be remembered.
This slide, we will discuss more techniques by which you can improve your memory. These are namely story method, face name method, and organizational schema method. In story method, a list of unrelated words are remembered by linking them together within the context of a story so that they are easier to recall. Whereas in the face name method, you have to think of an image linked to the name of the person and link this image to a prominent feature on the person's face. This is how you can remember the name of a person. Organizational schemas are a powerful technique by which you can organize information into semantic categories which may be based on places, time, sounds, and imagery and so on which are then used as cues for recall. To summarize, everyday memory focuses on the context of everyday experiences which people might have gone through. Autobiographical memory is termed as personal memory that is the combination of episodes recollected from an individual's life. They are identified in three levels, lifetime periods, general events, and knowledge-based events. Flashbulb memories are distinctly vivid, precise, concrete, long-lasting memories of a personal circumstance surrounding certain dramatic events. An important and well-studied aspect of episoding memory is the memory of the eyewitness. Eyewitness testimony is subject to error and manipulated by misleading information. The role of emotional response, confirmation bias, cannot be ignored here. Mnemonic is a technique or device, such as a rhyme or an image that uses familiar associations to enhance the storage and the recall of information in memory. Different ways to improve memory are PEC system, keyword method, story method, and face name system.